Alright, hello everyone. After we finished looking at this helpless horseshoe crab and the cold-hearted albino lobster that passes by, we are going to draw a coat of arms. The first thing you have to do is choose what kind of escutcheon, escu what kind of shield you want in the middle. There are many varieties of shape and format, and I chose a fairly standard one. I penciled it in first because it has to be at least somewhat symmetrical to make, you know, otherwise the whole drawing will look off. Then you decide the layout of the shield. I chose a pretty run-of-the-mill cross layout. Often the squares diagonal to each other will have the same thing in them, uh, so that's what I'm doing. Keep in mind, all this information I'm giving you is just from research done via video games, picture books, movies, and Google Images. On a lot of these, there's usually some type of crown or helmet at the top, or animal. I decided, I decided to draw a nice, regal-looking crown. Then again, I guess that's how most crowns look, because they're crowns. Joseph asked for something medieval, and a coat of arms was worn on the armor of medieval knights to identify them. As time went on, they were used for, um, they were used more widely as kind of a sim symbol for certain families in Europe. Uh, Romans used similar insignias sometimes, but it was to identify military units rather than individuals. So I have two main symbols in my shield: the crossed axes, which symbolize uh, dwarves or chopping people up with large war axes on the battlefield, I'm sure, and the lion head, which probably symbolizes royalty and power. The fact that I'm drawing the lion head licking a shining orb lends some other worldly or divine element to it, so you know not to mess with whoever's wearing this coat of arms. They will mess you up. I added a couple of swords crossed behind the shield just to make it look extra cool, even though I didn't really see anything like that in any of the pictures I looked at. Uh, when you've got all that done, it's time to start working on the mantling, or scroll work, or whatever you want to call it. Now, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be some sort of vegetation, or a cloth mantle that they draped over the helmet that's been shredded to bits in battle, because my eyes tell me one thing, and the internet tells me another. If you want to learn how to draw this curly scroll work stuff, just look at lots of pictures of it online and practice. That's what I did. Finally, I added a couple of scrolls on the top and the bottom. I don't know if these are supposed to be cloth or paper, but it doesn't really matter. I looked up a couple of Latin mottos and slapped them on there. The top one is translated to, Nothing is heavy to those who have wings, which doesn't really make much literal sense, but if you think of the wings of imagination and get all metaphorical about it, it's a little better. The bottom one can be translated to, From possibility to actuality, which is really what art making is, if you think about it. More on that in a future video, maybe. That's all for today. Goodbye.